the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. That we might worthily prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries, we pause calling to mind our sin, asking our Lord for his pardon and his forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all of the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, creator and redeemer of human nature, who will that your word should take flesh in an ever-virgin womb, Look with favor on our prayers, that your only begotten Son, having taken to himself our humanity, may be pleased to grant us a share in his divinity, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. scepter shall not depart from Judah. A reading from Genesis. Jacob called his sons and said to them, Assemble and listen, sons of Jacob. Listen to Israel, your father. You, Judah, shall your brothers praise, your hand on the neck of your enemies. The sons of your father shall bow down to you, Judah, like a lion's whelp. You have grown up on prey, my son. He crouches like a lion's recumbent, the son, the king of beasts. Who would dare rouse him? The scepter shall never depart from Judah, or the mace from between his legs. While tribute is brought to him, and he receives the people's homage. The word of the Lord. Justice shall flourish in his time, and fullness of peace forever. O oh God, with your judgment endowed the king, and with your justice the king's son. He shall govern your people with justice, and your affliction, afflicted ones with judgment. Justice shall flourish in his time, in fullness of peace forever. The mountains shall yield peace for the people, and the hills justice. He shall defend the afflicted among the people, save the children of the poor. The justice shall flourish in his time, in fullness of peace forever. Justice shall fl flower in his days, and profound peace till the moon be no more. May he rule from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth. Justice shall flourish in his time, in fullness of peace forever. May his name be blessed forever. As long as the sun, his name shall remain. In him shall all the tribes of the earth be blessed. All the nations shall proclaim his happiness. Justice shall flourish in his time in fullness of peace forever.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the beginning of the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. The book of the genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Abraham became the father of Isaac, Isaac the father of Jacob, Jacob the father of Judah and his brothers. Judah became the father of Perez and Zerah, whose mother was Tamar. Perez became the father of Hezron, Hezron the father of Ram, Ram the father of Amminadab, Amminadab father of, became the father of Nashim, Nashim the father of Salom, Salmon the father of Boaz, whose mother was Rahab, Boaz became the father of Obed, whose mother was Ruth, Obed became the father of Jesse, Jesse the father of David the king. David became the father of Solomon, whose mother had been the wife of Uriah. Solomon became the father of Rehoboam, Rehoboam the father of Abijah, Abijah the father of Asaph. Asaph became the father of Jehoshaphat, Jehoshaphat the father of Jerem, Jerem the father of Uzziah. Uzziah became the father of Jotham, Jotham the father of Ahaz, Ahaz the father of Hezekiah. Hezekiah became the father of Manasseh, Manasseh the father of Amos, Amos the father of Josiah. Josiah became the father of Jeconiah and his brothers at the time of the Babylonian exile. After the Babylonian exile, Jeconiah became the father of Sheltiel, Sheltiel the father of Zerubbabel, Zerubbabel the father of Abiud. Abiud became the father of Eliakim, Eliakim the father of Azor, Azor the father of Zadok. Zadok became the father of Achim, Achim the father of Eliad. Eliad, the father of Eleazar. Eleazar became the father of Mathan. Mathan, the father of Jacob. Jacob, the father of Joseph, the husband of Mary. Of her was born Jesus, who is called the Christ. The total number, thus the total number of generations from Abraham to David is 14 generations. From David to the Babylonian exile, 14 generations. From the Babylonian exile to the Christ, 14 generations. The Gospel of the Lord. Deacon Tim gets the gold star this morning for surviving yet another genealogy experience. Speaking of genealogy, before the advent of Ancestry.com and all these other online occasions, I used to love to do some genealogical research. Uh, thank God for the Catholic Church because it's one of the easiest ways that you can actually do it. Uh, go back and look at baptism registers and certificates, and you can find a lot about the people that were close to you, the people that were part of your family. As a matter of fact, on my mom's side, before Ancestry.com, got all the way back to the 1500s in Paris, where I found that a lot of the people that were part of my family were pharmacists, drug peddlers back then. Uh, it seemed to be a very interesting thing that they somehow ended up in the new world. But then I remember when Ancestry.com and some of those other online ones came in, I said, well, let me go check out my research to make sure that I'm doing okay. And actually, it was actually profound. And every single person that I'd written down on the genealogy, they ended up popping back up on Ancestry.com too. Problem was, with Ancestry, then you start to find out everything. And then I started making some connections, and I realized, wait a minute, I'm kidding to who? I'm actually related to that person? Boy, I wish I could go back to the simple sacramental records and scratch a couple of people off the genealogical tree, right? Because when you start to realize just how interconnected we are, even though we might be fifth, sixth, seventh cousins removed, uh, there are some people that you would just simply not have to be part of the family. But what's interesting is that uh, families are domestic churches, right? Because that's where actually redemption should be had. Uh, that's where we actually learn more about the faith and learn more about the gospel. Even though our family situations are never very easy, even though they're very cloudy, and even though they're sometimes broken. Uh, go back to the first reading that you heard from the book of Genesis. And you remember the story of Joseph all that well. Bunch of brothers in the family, but everybody's got a little bit of a bone to pick with Joseph. Why? Well, he's got 
dad's eye. He's the favorite son, of course. Gets all the nice, pretty gifts around the Christmas tree. Has all the compliments that are said about him. And everybody else feels like the black sheep. Uh, You know the story. Before you know it, he finds himself at the bottom of a well sold into slavery. Uh, It's pretty bad when you hate your brother that much that you're willing to get him out of the house in that particular way. But in the end, despite all of that and all the messiness of that family life, what ends up happening? It's God's way of doing the workaround. It's God's way of telling that family, I can even fix this broken, unique situation and bring something good out of it. Those same brothers eventually are led back in front of their brother in Egypt, and that's where they have to go and seek food, essentials, everything they need in order to survive. And if you continue to read in the book of Genesis, you see the great reunion that takes place. It's all because of miraculous intervention. It's all because God is able to do something with the crooked lines, even making them straight. Then, of course, we hear the genealogy today. And a lot of people look at Matthew's genealogy and just sort of overlook it. But go on your Ancestry.com account and you start looking backwards and you see some of the colorful figures that are really part of your ancestry too. Uh, This makes sense, especially in light of theology, in light of the gospel, because I don't know if you picked up the one fact about Matthew's genealogy. Uh, Usually in the Old Testament, the New Testament, genealogy is traced by the male lineage. But it just so happens in Matthew's account that five women pop up in the middle of it. And if you go back and you read some of these stories about these women, sorry, ladies, uh, they're not the best ones that are actually out there. There is a little bit of prostitution that takes place and some other things, dare I not even speak about in the church. But then it all ends up on the last lady that we hear in the sacred scripture, a person whose name is Mary. And of course, over the next several days, as we move through the conclusion of the Advent season, you'll see that pivotal role that Mary plays in that process of salvation. It's as if Matthew is trying to say in his gospel, even though these family ties are very difficult, and even though there are these people that are in the middle of even Jesus' genealogy uh, that are kind of squirrely and shady characters, even in that, God can bring something new. God can bring the miraculous, and God can bring redemption. Which brings us back to our Ancestry.com accounts and our genealogical romps that we do every year. Uh, One of the things that's always interesting about the holiday season is that we all gather all the family around the table, and that's where we have the opportunity to sit, to catch up, and to talk about all the wonderful things that make us a family. But have you done that in recent years in your own family? Don't you have a couple of people in your life, too, that when you're putting the little placards with their names on the cards, you make sure that they're on the other side of the table from you, nowhere to be found, nowhere near you, because you would rather not talk to those persons sometimes. Or maybe, just maybe, they don't even make the Christmas card list because of their past transgressions, the hurts that they've caused, the difficult things that they've done. Heck, I've even got one in my family that we've kind of banished for a while because one of the family members sent a Christmas check to them, and guess what they did? They took the great pleasure of adding a couple of zeros to the back end of it, you know, so that they could get a few more dollars out of the Christmas till. You can imagine that person's not necessarily sitting around the Christmas table, right? But even in that, God can work very good things. You got Lent and Advent on different sides of the equation. Lent's all about sacrifice, and oftentimes we give things up. But there's a little bit of a penitential character here in the Advent season, too. That's why we wear the violet vestments. It's part of the reason that we anticipate with hope. And one of the things that I think Advent calls us to is to not give up, but to do something extra. Now, when we do something extra, it tends to be the low-hanging fruit, the obvious stuff. It's easy for us to put the credit card number in and give on Giving Tuesday or to yank one of the seminarians off the tree, and there are plenty of seminarians who will adopt them after Mass today. But outside of those things, it's difficult to do the other stuff that might be more difficult. Like when you rearrange the names on the table to put the ones that you really hate right next to you so that you've got to sit next to them the entire time. 
or maybe to send the Christmas card to the one that actually put the extra zeros on the back end of the check, even though you haven't talked to that person in a while because they swindled the old people out of a little bit of cash. Or maybe just maybe it's the time for you to pay a visit to somebody that's been alienated in your family specifically to bring them back to the fullness of what it is to be a part of a family. Or maybe invite them back to the faith to come with you to Mass to participate in the sacraments with us. It's not about giving up, it's about adding a little bit more. And by doing so, especially in our family units, I think we're actually ascending to what the gospel and the scriptures are all about. God can do the miraculous even in places that we would never expect. He did it in the Old Testament with Joseph and that broken family. He did it with all these shady characters, even in his genealogy, whereby he brought the incarnation in our midst. And now in the church today, he can do it the same way, even in our squirrely broken families where we go on Ancestry.com and we'd rather forget that part of our history. As we prepare to celebrate the Eucharist this morning, let us ask God for the grace and the courage to be able to add a little bit more in our Advent journey by reaching out to heal what is broken so that we can find new life in abundance. And if you need anywhere to start, families are a good place. We stand to place before our God all of our prayers of petition and of need. For the times in our journey of faith in which we have alienated members of our family, for forgiveness, we pray to the Lord. For those who celebrate the holiday season without immediate family, that they might know of the support of their community as they experience loneliness, we pray to the Lord. That we might seek redemption even in the brokenness of our spiritual journey, we pray to the Lord. For our beloved dead who have gone before us marked with the sign of faith, and for those for whom this Mass is being offered, we pray to the Lord. And for the prayers, the petition and need that we offer up in the silence of our hearts. Bring forth, even in the midst of our family, O God, new life and abundance through the power of your incarnate word. Provide the needs that we place before your altar through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. For to the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. For to the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. 
Sanctify these gifts of your church, O Lord, and grant that through these venerable mysteries we may be nourished with the bread of heaven. Through Christ our Lord, amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For all the oracles of the prophets foretold him, the Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all telling, John the Baptist sang of his coming, and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of the Nativity, so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exalted in his praise. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts that we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Margaret, St. Thomas, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Michael, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of the family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. 
There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow upon the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. And at the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Nourished by these divine gifts, Almighty God, we ask you to grant our desire that aflame with your spirit, we may shine like bright torches before your Christ when he comes, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Have a good day.